Hey, this is Pete Hines from Bethesda, and we're in the Bethesda booth at E3 talking about all things id. So everything old is new again when it comes to Doom and now Quake. Can you talk about what you learned from bringing Doom back that's being applied to Quake Champions? Um, I mean, certainly the, the biggest challenge of Doom was combining uh, the, the legacy of, of Doom and how folks remembered the original Doom games, how it made them felt, and boiling those games down to the, to the simplest elements and holding on to those in a game that's coming out in 2016 where things have evolved in advance and, and you know, shooters look and feel very different. I mean, Doom, Doom didn't invent first-person shooters, but it certainly popularized them in a way that no other game had up to that point. So that's a big, that's a big burden to carry when creating something that you're trying to sort of be true to that legacy while bringing something new to the modern gamer. And I think we've taken a lot of that in, in the development of Quake to, to this point in terms of uh, keeping all the things that folks remember about Quake, incredibly fast, fluid arena combat, um, and adding in this element of champions where it's just um, it's just evolving it a little bit, but maintaining all the things that folks remember about those original Quake games. And those original Quake games also really ushered in esports well before the Twitch and, li and live streaming phenomenon. What impact does that base history of esports have as you develop a new game like Quake in this modern esports era? Sure. I mean, as you as you heard Tim say on Sunday, um, it, you know. Uh, Esports is a big part of Quake, not because esports is now a big buzzword and everybody throws that that word out in relation to their game, but because that's what Quake has always been. QuakeCon exists in large part because of Quake and the competitive aspect and the esports aspect. And you know, it may not currently have a $10 million world championship, and, it, and therefore it doesn't it doesn't garner the same level of attention. But it's always been an esport. It's always had this really robust competitive environment. And Quake Champions is built from the ground up with that understanding that. It is a very competitive title. You know, the reason that 120 hertz and unlocked frame rate is important is because that's what the competitive players, that's what the esports community wants to see in a next Quake game is that unbelievably fast, fluid gameplay. And, and uh, at the same time, it's still accessible that if you if you aren't one of the best Quake players in the world, but you want a, a you know an online PC shooter that's really fast, I don't think you're going to find anything better than Quake. What do you feel when you look around E3? There's a lot of shooters this year coming out over the next year. Uh, differentiates Quake in that landscape? Um, I think it's a mix of things. I mean, I think if you look uh, even just last month, John, at the, at the reviews of Doom and how people reacted to it, that it, it, it Doom didn't do anything earth-shattering, but at the same time, because it sort of moved away from so many conventions of shooters today, that it felt so fresh and different simply because it didn't encourage cover, that it, co it constantly encouraged you to move and be aggressive. The, the, the fluidity of the movement, not just for yourself, but, but for, the, for the enemies. In the case of Quake, a lot of those things, same things I think hold true. Just something as simple as how quickly you move, how vertical the space is, um, you know, switching out and picking up different guns in the environment. All of those things sometimes are difficult to to explain or even to show, but then you pick up a controller, or you, in this case, you sit down at a keyboard and mouse, and you really feel the difference of the game in a way that you just previously, somebody tried to explain that to you, like, oh, it's really fast and fluid. You're like, yeah, well, that's what everybody says, but then you actually play it and you're like, oh my God, like from a responsiveness standpoint, this is, this is insane. Like I've never played anything like this. I, I think a lot of it is gonna be proven out in that way where we can talk to it, but when we start to put it in people's hands, they're like, okay, I get it. Like This is the Quake game I wanted and, and I get why Fast and Fluid here means something different than maybe when somebody else says it. And it's a game to create a QuakeCon. What role will QuakeCon play as you move forward this year? Well, it's gonna start with, we're gonna show it and reveal it and show more details on it this year at QuakeCon in, in Dallas. Um, but outside of that, uh, QuakeCon is gonna be kind of a launching point as we grow our plans to support uh, Quake Champions outside of QuakeCon. And you know, we have it as a, a competitive uh, tournament and, and a couple of other events uh, during the year and around the world, but we're, we have plans to grow and expand that support outside of QuakeCon. Still We'll continue to, to build that QuakeCon community, um, but but grow it and make it available to folks and do those kinds of things um, all throughout the world, all throughout the year.